Perinatal stroke, diagnosis and management. A full-term, healthy, nine-month-old girl presents for a developmental check. She is appropriately interactive and moves all extremities anti-gravity. She is able to roll and sit independently and is not yet crawling. She babbles, smiles, and responds to sounds. She reaches for objects and brings them to midline, but does not yet transfer between hands. You become concerned when her parents tell you she consistently prefers to use her left hand. Perinatal stroke refers to cerebrovascular injury that occurs between 20 weeks gestation and 28 days of postnatal life. Its incidence is approximately one per every 1,600 to 2,300 live births, and it affects an estimated 5 million people worldwide. Perinatal stroke often has long-term effects on a child's neurodevelopment into adulthood. Early identification and management of perinatal stroke with timely consultation with a child neurologist are crucial to optimize outcomes across the lifespan. Half of perinatal strokes occur prenatally and half occur postnatally. Approximately 50% present in the first week of life. Some perinatal strokes are identified close to the time of injury in the neonatal period, but many are identified months or years later. There are six types of perinatal stroke. Here, we will focus on arterial, ischemic, and hemorrhagic strokes. Of these, neonatal arterial ischemic stroke, or NAIS, and neonatal hemorrhagic stroke, or NHS, are identified in the neonatal period. The most common presentation of NAIS or NHS are seizures and encephalopathy. By contrast, arterial presumed perinatal ischemic stroke or APPIS and presumed perinatal hemorrhagic stroke or PPHS are identified after the neonatal period. The presentations are widely variable. Presentations can include isolated early hand preference, focal arm or leg weakness that becomes more apparent with age, or hemiplegic cerebral palsy. Common comorbidities include developmental delays and epilepsy. In any age group, the gold standard for diagnosing perinatal stroke is MRI, with MRA for vascular imaging. All children should undergo echocardiogram and basic laboratory evaluation, CBC, CMP, and coagulation studies. Congenital heart disease and bacterial meningitis are risk factors for NAIS, whereas arteriovenous malformations, arterial anomalies, and bleeding diathesis are risk factors for NHS. The association of thrombophilia and NAIS is less clear so testing is done on a case-by-case basis. Acute management of perinatal stroke is supportive and focused on neuroprotective measures. Neonates should be kept normothermic, normoglycemic, and normotensive. Child neurology consultation is warranted for all neonates with stroke. They should be monitored on EEG for acute symptomatic seizures with effective treatment with anti-seizure medications. Neurosurgical consultation is warranted in neonates with large hemorrhages. If the hemorrhage has intraventricular extension, head circumference must be monitored closely for signs of post-hemorrhagic hydrocephalus, which may require shunt placement. After the neonatal period, management is focused on identifying any underlying risk factors for stroke and starting therapies as soon as possible to optimize neurodevelopment. Motor deficits and outcomes may be improved with early referral to rehabilitative therapies. Children should also be thoroughly monitored for delays in cognition, language, and social-emotional skills. Perinatal stroke presents in neonates, infants, and older children. Among older children, there is a wide range in severity of presenting symptoms. An isolated early hand preference may be the first sign of a perinatal stroke, and requires timely referral to a child neurologist. 
Our patient is found to have an arterial presumed perinatal ischemic stroke, or APPIS, in the left MCA distribution. She does not have ongoing risk factors for stroke and starts physical, occupational, and speech therapies to optimize her motor and language outcomes. For more information on perinatal stroke, including its pathophysiology, clinical presentation, and management, please see the course resources.